We are back. I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with the always lovely and talented Andrea Kay, the always incredible Urban Miaris. Mm-hmm. And we have our next in-studio guest with us. Welcome, Andrea Epstein from Brian's 24 Restaurant Bar and Grill. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So tell us about Brian's 24. Well, we are the only 24-hour full-service restaurant in all of downtown San Diego. And we are also family owned and operated. And if you ever go downtown, especially in the Gaslamp area, it's a very rare thing to see a family restaurant. There's a few of us, but hardly, hardly many. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, a lot of restaurants downtown, uh, ever since they revamped downtown with uh, Petco and and all the other Mm -hmm. stuff that they brought in, you know, downtown has been a whole new environment. How long has Brian's been down there? We've had the restaurant for about six and a half years, Okay. Uh, but we're locals, uh, born and raised. Me and my siblings are all born and raised in San Diego. And so we've seen the transition. Uh, my dad used to have a business downtown and it's so different now than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah, I actually lived downtown back in, um, I was working in Symphony Towers and I was at um, City Front Terrace condos. I don't know if you know what that is. And there was, not only was there no 24-7, there was an, almost no restaurants open during the day down there. There was no place to go get breakfast. This was back in the late 90s. Mm-hmm. And I would have loved, loved, loved to have you there when I was yeah. living down there. It's really kind of sad. I mean, we're not a small town. We're a big mm-hmm. city and we don't have a lot in our hub of downtown San Diego. Mm-hmm. We're still one of very few breakfast places. Um, we, being 24 hours, you can get breakfast 24 seven. So that's a really huge draw. We're one of very few lunch places. We, of course, um, gas lamp, especially in, you know, East village, Marina area, whichever downtown area, little Italy that you talk about, there's a lot of places for dinner. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of places to go and have a drink, whether it be in a lounge atmosphere or a club atmosphere, but we're still not really on a map in terms of what every downtown suburban neighborhood has, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of San Diego. So and and breakfasts are becoming more and more popular now, it seems. Absolutely. Yeah. So how smart of you guys to expand to 24 seven every day? Yes. So we bought the restaurant from a couple guys named Brian, uh, again, six and a half years ago, and they were 24 hours just on Friday and Saturday. And, Knowing San Diego so well, we knew that if we were going to do this, we call it our, our best, craziest idea that we had. <laughs> we uh, decided that if we're going to do this, we're going to do it 24-7 because it doesn't make sense otherwise. Um, with all of the hotels downtown and very few of them having room service 24 hours and none of them having a 24 restaurant off obviously, uh, we could help the hotels out, which we have great relationships with them. Uh, with so much residential now downtown, we mm-hmm. filled that void as well. Plus, think about how many flights come in to San Diego late at night. There's nowhere Mm-mm. for somebody who's coming in yeah. to town to eat. Mm-hmm. It just made sense. Yeah. Well, it makes sense to me because coming from New Orleans, everything's open 24-7. Exactly. We'd go eat Trout Amandine at 3 in the morning. Mm-hmm. So this is my kind of place. <laughs> you know, I can go and eat a cheeseburger in the middle of the night. Exactly. And, and even have a cocktail along with my patty melt. <laughs> right? Exactly. You got is a, that co- something you got else a cot in the back for Andrea? <laughs> we have it and it has her name on it. So it kind of helps that her name is my name. But, you know. I know, right? <laughs> Yay. Okay. I got a question for you now. Absolutely. Uh, there's a shortage of cooks and chefs out there. How do you maintain 24 hours? It's not easy. Um, there, and you're exactly right. To be honest with you, we are in the process of hiring a couple new kicks as we speak. And it's hard. It's very competitive. Um, I think that the key is to, once you get them, to keep them. And you got to know how to handle, how to treat your employees well. Um, we have a very big family atmosphere. Yes, we're a family, me and my brother and my sister and my mother. But then our our employees are an extension of that. And some of them are family. We have two brothers. We have a mother and a son and a husband. Oh, we I have, love it's that. It's family throughout. And some of the people have been there longer than we have. We call them our gifts with purchase. Oh. <laughs> and they're part of our family. So that's really the key. But we just hired another guy yesterday. He's amazing. And it's about finding the right fit. And then they are happy. We're happy. And you just got to keep them happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the biggest problem. People starting mm-hmm. in the food service business, restaurants mainly, is that they can't find quality cooks and chefs, whether it's grill work or more more exquisite mm-hmm. foods. Absolutely. It's a huge, mm-hmm. huge issue. Well, 
I would imagine that kind of everything might feel like an issue if you've never been in the restaurant business before. And then as a family, you guys decide to buy a restaurant. Tell us about that. Well, we have been in the restaurant business. You had been. Yeah, we have okay. for many, many years. Um, just before we purchased Brian's 24, we had a restaurant in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We closed that in 2008. Eight, I believe, right as the market was kind of going down. It's, you know, it's a small vacation town mm-hmm. and we had to close it. Uh, we just lost it with the economy. There was no um, snowbirds going into Arizona and all of the, the vacationers in the summer from, you know, mm-hmm. Southern California actually were, were selling their houses and, yeah. and everything. So um, my parents moved back here. They were living there full time. They moved back to San Diego where we're from. And my dad decided that it was time to find the next venture. And um, my brother was actually along with me. We were in Las Vegas and my, and he was unhappy. He was working in hospitality as was I. And my dad called him and said, let's go find something, you know, and they took a ride around San Diego, found this restaurant for sale, figured out the gap in that there being no 24 seven operation. And the rest is kind of history. My dad, mm-hmm. unfortunately, passed away um, about a year and a half after we oh. opened the restaurant. But that's when my sister joined and then I shortly thereafter. And we've been hitting a home run ever since. Yeah. Sounds great. Have. Sounds great. You're listening to Close Up on San Diego Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at am1170theanswer.com. Give us a tweet at Close Up SD. Email me at barry at closeupsandiego.com or find our page on Facebook. Want to hear from you? I'm your host, Barry Waxler, here with Andrea K, Urban Miaris, and Andrea Epstein from Brian's 24 Restaurant Bar and Grill. I have to get that all in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you have alcohol there. We do. We have a full bar. Wow. Um, and I think that that's part of our success because like Andrea said, you could come in at six o'clock in the morning, have your burger and a Bloody Mary. Why not? And you mm-hmm. wonder why Andrea said you could come in at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah. with alcohol there. Okay? Yeah, you know, with the, that. Yeah. No. with the uh, statistics or I'd say it's more folklore that most restaurants close. It's the worst or most toughest business to get into, which I disagree with that. Uh, People don't understand why so many people want to get into the business. If it's in your blood, you just love it. Absolutely. It's a people business. And if you love people and serving them and, uh, it's just wonderful. And of all the businesses I've owned, I've always said the restaurant business was and still is my favorite. It's very social. You, mm-hmm. it's, you're always talking to people. You're having a good time. I think that why several people don't succeed is that they go into a restaurant, they see how fun it is, and they think it's all fun. But you have a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication, whether you're an owner or an employee. And if you don't have that in you, if you don't have it in your blood, like you said, you won't, you won't survive it. Um, you have to have it in you. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the menu. Well, it's huge. <laughs> we have over 200 items on our menu. Oh my goodness! Uh, I know. And how we do? We have such a small uh, cooks line, and th- these guys are amazing. They pop stuff out of there like crazy. They do such a good job. Uh, we have everything from omelets and benedicts and pancakes and waffles to sandwiches and burgers and pizzas and desserts. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of um, dinner entrees. We're working on something new for the fall. We're going to do some blue plate specials, oh, make it total yeah. diner atmosphere. So it's a diner style menu. Our focus is on big portions, comfort food. You come there with your family. You know, you can come there with your kids. You can come there with your mm-hmm. friends. You can. We have a lot of bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. We have it all. I've had and business lunches there. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, with that that size menu, a customer can never get bored. <laughs> right. true, too. Yeah. And we tell people if they leave hungry, it's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear about, not to get all like, you know, tabloid journalists, but, you know, the family, a family run business. I mean, anybody throwing a plate at somebody's head. I mean, it's got to get like tense at times. Yeah. You know, to actually have thrown a plate, no. To think about <laughs> it, I'm I'm going to plead the fifth. But it is hard. It does have its challenges. But if you think about who you trust most, especially in business, it's your family. So what we do is we kind of divide and conquer. The four of us have four very different sets of responsibilities. Um, all decisions, um, big or small, are made together because without it, you, you don't have collaboration. You have to have that part. And anytime we can't decide... The decider is mom. She's the final say, and she always will be. It's the way that it's going to go. 
<laughs> okay. Well, that that will have to be passed down the generation. So sooner so. or later, that's going to be you. What a legacy. Well, that's and great. I'm kind of the bossy one of the bunch. So <laughs> it's going to end up being that way no matter what. Well, well that, her that, name is Andrea. Exactly. Yeah, what, <laughs> <laughs> it's a name thing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what Chef Robert Irvine always tells me. Who is the boss? Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we're hoping some nieces and nephews. I've got five nieces and nephews Aww. so far, and my uh-huh. brother's getting married in a few months. So hopefully, in a few years, we'll have some more. And then, you know, we hope to pass it pass it down. We don't mm-hmm. we don't see an end to it. We're having a good time. Oh yay! So so I, I'm trying to figure out. You know, how, it sounds like a family restaurant, a family diner. You know, I grew up in in Philadelphia. Diners were were common back there. You know, how does alcohol get? I guess it's because <laughs> you're downtown. How does alcohol mix into this? It, it's actually simple. Uh, we follow the same laws as anything else, so we can start serving at six a.m. Is it because you serve Comic Con once a year? <laughs> yeah, we need it after that. Actually, yeah. that's the most fun group that comes into town. We have a blast. We're exhausted when it's over, but we have a blast. But the mix of alcohol is just a natural thing because, again, like you said, we're downtown. But who doesn't want to have a, a cocktail? We have people that come in for happy hour before they go to their fancy steakhouse dinner down the street. Mm-hmm. You know, they come in for a, a nice beer. We have some locals on, local beers on tap. We try to do everything kind of have to be a little bit of everything to everyone if you're a diner that's mm-hmm. what, that's what diners especially are in the downtown area yeah such a, a wide variety of people you'll yeah serve yeah. Yeah. and i asked you uh, back in the green room i said if i if you had somebody walk in there and say i want one thing what do you do best Tell us what that is. Well, I'm going to be honest. There's 45 employees that are going to give you 45 answers. Mm-hmm. But my answer is our pancakes. We have amazing buttermilk mm. pancakes. Mm. And you can get them all different ways. Oh, like what? You can have them plain. You oh. can do chocolate chip. You can put oh. blueberries in it, strawberries, bananas. Oh. You can have um, s'mores pancakes, <gasps> peanut butter oh. and jelly pancakes. Oh, lordy. It's good stuff. Mm. <laughs> So, in other words, I can go grab my kids, bring them down. They can sit in the pancake room. I'll go back in the bar, and we'll have a good time. You can have a good time. Yeah. And you don't have to sit with them if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so you all have a good time, and it, then separately. It the all day. depends on the day. It yep. all depends on the day. Do you serve breakfast 24 hours a day? Or yes. Just a- yep, 24-7. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. Yep, which is very popular, breakfast mm-hmm. for dinner. Yeah. Any plans to expand other locations? Uh, in terms of the current concept, 24 hours, uh, no, probably not. It's a tough business being 24-7. Mm-hmm. It's a big undertaking. And having all of the hotels and the residential and everything downtown, uh, I don't see another area that would be successful as, or at least as successful as we are in downtown San Diego. However, that being said, another concept down the road is something that we would love to do. Mm-hmm. Have you guys been bantering it about? My brother is a passionate barbecue guy. Really? Uh, do I do I hear uh, catering? We do a little bit of catering. We're attached the to the Ramada St. James, um, and they have a rooftop venue, so we do the catering for that. They have a little meeting space that we do for that, and once in a while we'll do some big events, things like that. But we are a really small place. We're 90 seats. We have a small kitchen, and we can we have the space to cook for the restaurant. So although we will do catering, it's nothing that we go out and um, market to or towards. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So you must have a lot of a lot of traffic when the uh, Padres are playing downtown. People don't want to drive in the fight the traffic getting out. They come over and they uh, set up at your place. Absolutely. Before and after. Uh, we're the only thing open a lot of times. You know, last night the game, people were walking out of the game between 930 mm. and 10, something like that. And we're especially on a Monday night. Mm. Nothing going on. So but I love the fact that it's not just a great place to go to because it happens to be open. The quality of the food's really good. Thank you. We work really hard um, to make sure that we keep the quality up. Um, we are constantly trying new dishes, trying new um, suppliers, trying new foods, trying just to make sure that we have the best. Last, mm-hmm. Yesterday, we made all different kinds of fried chicken. Okay, <gasps> Is ours really the best that we have? And we're cooking like crazy and eating like crazy. You know, that has to be the hard part of the job. <laughs> right. And making sure, like, are we doing it best? We made a new hollandaise for our Benedicts. Is what we have, what we're doing now, the right one? And, you know, we, you have to constantly check yourself mm-hmm. Great. We do. well we're starting to run short on time tell our listeners number one where are you located we're at 828 6th avenue uh in the gas lamp between streets e and f attached to the ramada st james okay 
So that's uh, and that's right down there where I started. Down, I think it's Fifth and E in the old uh, Jewelers Exchange from oh, many years ago. Oh, you were there. Jewelers Exchange is directly across the street, Sixth and E. Yeah. Sixth and e. Yeah, that was back in. I forget about I, that. I'm not going to go how far back that was, but that was a <laughs> long way back. So, anyway, so you're down at, at Sixth and E, and uh, do you have a website? Yes, uh, Brian's Twenty Four dot com. That makes awesome. it real easy. Really yeah. Real easy. And Brian, how's Brian spelled? B R I or B R Y? With an I. I Good okay. question. Great. Well, thanks for being with us. Uh, we look forward to getting together and having some more stories coming out of uh, Brian's 24. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Great. Uh, this is Close Up on Sending a Business here on KCBQ, streaming live at am1170theanswer.com. Send us a tweet at Close Up SD or just find our page on Facebook. You can always email me at barry at closeupsandiego.com. Let me know what you think. I'm your host, Barry Waxler. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Yeah, I'm feeling more